The time has come, ladies and gentlemen, for the grand finals of the World Championship Series final circuit event of the year. The only two people good enough to take the big championships must now fight in a brutal cage match to determine the last victor before BlizzCon. Kicking things off in the southeast of Acropolis, we have the Blues Arc, the Italian Stallion. He's Raynor! He faces off against the Finnish Phenom, the reigning world champion and arguably the best StarCraft II player, period. He is Cyril! These two players have built quite a rivalry. They've met many times, and I feel they're probably going to meet a lot more times as well in the future. But we're at a turning point here with Rainer. Really bringing it to Cyril this year, taking three series from him before Cyril finally fell back in Challenger with a 4-0 win. And this time, it's Rainer who's looking to try and turn things around with another grand final win here. I, I saw a sign in the chat, or excuse me, the crowd. Sometimes it's hard to tell the two apart, huh? <laughs> Someone says, spoiler alert, Zerg wins. And Sometimes I don't feel like I'm watching Zerg when I watch these two players play, especially against each other. You think about ZVZ, you think Ling Bane, you think tons of roaches vomiting all over each other, but these two <laughs> always seem to bring out something special. It always looks a little different than any of the other ZVZs, and Europe has always been the breeding ground for some of the best Zerg players, the best Zerg competition, whether it's in Europe or all over the world. Most of the biggest contenders have been these European Zergs, inspired by heroes of old with those big, deep runs, guys like Snoot of old, Stefano of old, and now a new generation being inspired by Cyril and inspired by Raynor. And I'm just, I'm just so excited to see where it goes, how these games end up shaping, because we've seen Raynor be a very creative player in ZVZ in general. Um, I feel like every time, He's like that guy that can do the crazy party trick. Whenever he plays his EBZ, everyone in chat's like, do the Ling Lurker, do the Ling Lurker. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, guys, look, I can't do it every game. Come on. I no, all right, I'll do it. It's all right. Like, all right. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, it's like, well, little Bobby, little Bobby wants to see it. It's like, okay, fine, fine. Do it, we'll do it for the kids. We'll get some fun and some excitement, some variety in the build orders here. And that's really what makes it so special is that both of these players can do that style. They've done it so many times and the longer ZVZs these two have played, whether it's against each other or against the top Korean Zergs, have always been some of the most special. I think my favorite ZVZ of all time is still uh, those last few that Cyril played on his way to the World Championship last year. Really just next level. And they've been stepping it up this year too, Johan. Yeah, they once played an epic grand finals here in Montreal. Let's see if they can have one more there. On paper, Rainer should, is a lot of the time uh, the more aggressive player, but Cyril really brought it to him in their last matchup that they played in Challenger. He played very aggressive in game number one, won pretty early with Lings and Banes just kind of rushing him. In game two, Cyril played uh, Roach Ravager with adding some Hydralisks. Rainer was playing the same thing, they were both maxed, and then Cyril just won the fight by landslide with better positioning, better concaves, and everything. So as of late, Cyril definitely has been more impressive. Now he's 13 and 0 in maps in this tournament. And honestly, like as impressive as he's been, one thing he hasn't done yet is winning a tournament, not dropping a single map. It feels like a clash of the titans where so far it feels like neither of them has really been able to like lose at all ever or really ever played or broken a sweat. But one of them is going to have to here. They can't both win. There can't be a draw. One of them will win It is literally here. impossible for both players to win and take the trophy. <laughs> I doubt we will see the Kumbaya moment where Cyril offers Rainer to also raise it with him. <laughs> this is not that movie. This is not that anime. And I do think that uh, Cyril comes into this player, I, I agree with you, stronger in terms of the recent results, stronger in terms of his tournament results. Rainer looked really, really good. Dominant performance as well, but not without a map here or there being dropped. And Cyril has still that level of fear, you know? You look at Rainer, and, and I, I love that Cloak and brought this up on the stage. He's very stylish. He's a cool guy. Roddy's telling me about them hanging out at event stuff, and I'm like, 
Rainer doesn't really inspire fear. He's a he's a fun player, but yeah. that can be deceiving as well. Absolutely. Because you don't go into the match thinking, oh, Rainer's going to beat the crap out of me. You think, oh, Rainer's going to design my apartment for me because I have no taste. <laughs> but at I recommend zero. you a few Italian dishes, you know? Yeah. But then you, know you play what? against him and it's like, nope. The only thing he's recommending for you is uh, what activities to do because you're out of the tournament. And in this case, we have a Spire on the way now for Rainer. You know, after they faced a WCS Summer, I asked a bunch of uh, some of the best Zergs that we have in the WCS circuit what they thought about the Grand Finals. And they told me that if Cell played a lot of times against Rainer, Rainer will only win a small amount of those times just because of his style and, you know, taking risks and everything. I feel like so far this year that hasn't necessarily been true because they've traded series. They've gone three and three. And Cyril in ZVZ, in fact, this year is 29 and four. Three of those four losses are to Rainer. So he's one of the few guys that can beat him. Rainer has never lost to anybody else than Cyril in the WCS circuit. So it feels like the only guys that can beat one another is the other player here in this grand final yeah, somehow. If, if Cyril's the seven foot tall brawler that just gets his hands around you and squeezes you to a pulp, Rainer is Eddie Gordo spinning on his head, <laughs> trying to land kicks on his face while upside down. And I think that's gonna be an interesting trend to follow in this series. How tricky is he gonna be? Is Cyril gonna be able to force the game to be in that way that he wants it to? Because Rainer is really one of the only players good enough to beat him. Cyril tries to get some Zerglings around to the side, get a little bit of scouting information. Bailey destroys a good few of them, but catches those Mutalisks coming out. Cyril's going for his own Spire, yeah, but doesn't have it yeah. quite yet. And oftentimes in ZVZ, getting those Mutas out first, it's still, you know, you don't have as much to put into those Mutas, so the Ooh, player who goes in second can still get them, but yeah, you're right. Cyril going straight into coverage. We have seen this before, but goodness, this uh, these games always end up being pretty weird, Todd. Those yeah. coverage are quite tanky. Their uh, base damage, even though they don't do bonus to mutas, is still solid. So Rainer gets a little bit of free reign until those Corruptors come out. And with that high armor, they can bully those mutas away, but it does feel like it begs for a counterattack to go along with it. Yeah, so many split-second decisions being taken in those games. And I mean, Rainer is going for plus one Zerg Flyer attacks, and he's adding a on a ton of mutas. So I think that may have been what Cyril was anticipating. That's why he's trying to really hard counter those mutas in saying, well, if I try to go mutas myself, I'd just be too far behind on that muta count and on the upgrades. So I'll just get some corruptors to make sure I can counter that. And maybe I can overwhelm you on the ground with just roaches. And I don't hate the idea of that. Cyril did time this out, that is plus two to be finishing soon, but his roaches are gonna get surrounded in the middle of the map. Those corruptors really need to push the mutas away or they're gonna be able to help kill those roaches. The zerglings with plus one melee from Rainer, one of the options that he does like quite a bit allows those links to do some damage to the roaches, but it really comes down to those corruptors have to be the bodyguards so that these upgraded roaches that are going to two-shot these zerglings and rip apart any anything equivalent that Rainer could put out. As long as those mutas can't contribute to the fight because they have to fight against the corruptors, the corruptors are doing their job. Now, of course, in a world where somehow these corruptors were in large enough numbers to beat the mutas, Caustic Spray comes into play, but these corruptors are just here so that the roaches can get into the third, get into the natural, and already Cyril trying to get that early damage done. Spine crawlers are being added for Rainer, but they're not going to be done in time, and Rainer realizing, okay, I need to bring those mutas Look back. at the army supply. It's uh, not looking all that good for Rainer. Those mutas are going to be able to start fighting the roaches once the corruptors are gone, but will it have been too late? So far, 14 drones have been picked off, but Rainer still sitting not too far behind just yet. As long as Cyril can continue to focus down those drones, though, these roaches will have more than done what they've needed to do, Todd. Yeah, Cyril is overwhelming him. That plan went so well. He micro perfectly with the corruptors, pulling them back just right outside of the range of the mutadisc. And now there's he's something killed very so slow. much. The march of the queens. <laughs> there's they something very reached... slow on the mini map. <laughs> They've almost reached the speed zone here, but a lot of the ground army of Cyril is gone. He's going to regroup with the roaches before engaging back into those mutadisc. I'm not sure if this is enough queens. He's going to start to push this back. I guess what he wants to do is preoccupy him or at least force him to engage into the queen so that the roaches can continue to run through. All of the anti-air is just fodder. It's a really weird thing to say because killing a player who has a pretty sizable army supply that you can't engage seems like it would be impossible. Yet, here Cyril is taking a massive lead in terms of that economy, continuing to blast away at the drone line, deal damage to the infrastructure, slow down the production by killing the queens, and Rainer, he's gonna, I do think there's a, there's a world though, if he can stabilize against this, surely he'd be able to just crank out a round or two of drones once he has enough mutalisks to prevent Cyril from just sending more forces straight into his base. Yeah, he actually minimized the damage from these attacks really, really well. I thought he was out of it, but Rainer 
somewhat evens up the supply here. He was trailing behind for a long time. I guess there was a lot of roaches on the map, but he got rid of them very nicely. And now Cyril kind of went on, back on the defensive with the Corruptor massing on his side of the map. He did kill the Spire, worth noting, so these Corruptors are going to try and defend against this. But Raynor actually has plus one attack, so those Mutalisks are doing damage to the Corruptors. They're actually able to punch through that 200 hit point, two armor default. And while the Roaches can deal with the Lings, you do want to make sure you don't lose all of those Queens, because they are also an important component of defending against the Mutas. Now, once that creep gets pushed away from the new expansion and you can't get Spore Crawlers over there, it's going to become a whole lot harder to push those Mutalisks off of the expansion. Yeah, Rainer's gonna be forced back here. He tried to breach that fourth base. He's on five bases himself, but the fourth and fifth are not quite saturated, like he lost a ton of units. And instead of replenishing his drone count, which he's doing now, he went into more and more units. It feels like that Spire is taking forever, by the way, to come back up. Definitely one of the buildings that takes the longer time to be built. Are you just saying that because you know there's Blizzard people watching time? <laughs> <laughs> it does take a while to rebuild. Yeah, no, he's been able to build up a lot of Corruptors, Serral that is to keep that mutilus count, because it was starting to get a little bit out of control there, yeah. Don. If that snowball's even harder, then suddenly you don't get that fourth base up. You get really hard contained inside of your own base. And while, yes, Corruptors are nice, massing Corruptors against Mutas begs for your opponent to go back into a ground-based army, because getting straight to Broodlords is not really a realistic option at this phase of the game. And Raynor, is, he's staying the course here. He's going into more and more Mutas. He doesn't want to transition out of this. He's going to start producing some Roaches. He's going for plus two melee. But Cyril already has plus two missile. Raynor does have a lot of mobility here, he's thanks to, to all those Zerglings. And he's going to go for the snipe on the hatchery. He gets, gets it. it. Beautifully done, Todd. Uh, grabbing that with those plus one links. He softened it up with the Mutalisks earlier. And the Corruptors are going to show up to this base. He says, well, do I want... He's looking for the Mutas. He wants to engage yeah. them as they come out. And the reason why he wants to do this is so he can get another Muta attack excuse me, Roach attack going. He has plus one Carapace on the way for the Corruptors. It scales really nicely with them since they have two armor by default. But This is like the ZVZ version of Corsair DT. Corruptor Roach. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird game that it's, it's really odd. We, oh man, I feel like there was a period of time where we had quite a few players going Corruptors in ZVZ to deal with Mutas, but uh, I feel like I haven't seen it all that recently to my, uh, my wonderful... All right, so going things. for it Still, again. Yeah, and there are a lot of Corruptors here. They are going to worry about the overkill a little bit more than the Mutalisks will in this situation, but really it's all about the body blocking. The Corruptors are here. They're, they're, they're using their taunt right now, Todd. They're trying to pull all the Mutalisks' attention over so that these Roaches can rip apart the infrastructure, and he's going to kill the Spire once again right as that plus one Carapace finishes. Unfortunately, it's going to happen around the time that these Corruptors are in too low numbers to really take advantage of it, but I don't think that that's going to be the last we'll see of it. Oh my Rainer God. playing a very intriguing style of ZVZ. Sans Roaches. And he's finally gonna transition. Hydra is dead, he hasn't remade the Spire. And honestly, we talked about it on the desk, you know, it's ZVZ, but it's Cell versus Rainer, and so far, this series is delivering big time yeah. action all over the map. Not a second wasted. They're clashing so hard, they're gonna leave a scorched earth behind them on Acropolis here. I like, I, I know the Observer's trying to show us how many different types of units have been lost, but then I'm just like, the numbers are still so close. They just boil it down to raw resources. They've been trading blows non-stop. The mutas come in, pick off that oh sport crawler, and the Corruptors aren't in high enough numbers for him to push it. Look yeah, at resources a, lost. They're within 500 resources of each other. Beautiful, beautiful, less than that even. All right, Rainer, how aggressive does he want to play here? You have to be careful. One single overextension here could put you in big trouble, and I feel like that's especially true for Rainer because he's got the more fragile units here in the Mutalisks. If he moves out of position, gets a lot of those kills, he would suddenly find himself at a great deficit. So he's playing it a little bit slower here. I guess both players are going to catch a breath, and so will we maybe because that was super <laughs> intense so far. 14 minutes of a lot action. Uh, just another way to describe Cyril versus Rainer. Game one already delivering in stellar fashion. Of course, the Corruptors, while they're not as fast as those Mutas, important to keep in mind, they do have twice the range of them, so being able to get those hits off and kind of chase them a little bit is still possible. They're not the slowest units in the game either, so cutting them off as they try to turn the corner. Every Muta that is shaved off here is really nice. If those Corruptors ever get in big enough numbers to kill the Mutas, I expect to see quite a few Caustic Sprays go all over the oh, hatcheries, yeah. and Queens are not going to be able to save them. Rainer is transitioning so intensely, by the way. He went for Lurker then, he's going to Hive now. He's already thinking about everything he needs to get behind this. He's gonna try to catch up on the missile attack upgrades, where Cyril already has plus two attack. 
And Cell is just going for Burrow and getting more units right now. Still trying to be aggressive around that natural base. This is the third bridge. And this is a problem, though. Rainer's really starting to make something happen. These Zerglings are going for the counterattacks, but that big switch into the Hydra is... Todd, Corruptors are cool against Mutas. It's like a neat thing you can do, but they're not oh going to be able to deal oh with the God. Ling Hydra that's coming out on the map. For Rainer, he's able to get onto these Roaches. He's starting to clean this up. There's the Caustic Spray. That's all he can do with the Corruptors now. The entire map is blinking. There's action everywhere. The lair gets sniped inside of the main base of Cyril, and the attack on the other side of the ground was shut down, but so many Corruptors are left over. And he kills the hatchery in that location. This is absolute chaos. Yeah, he did pick off one of the tech buildings. Well, I believe he got the lurker down there. I'm not entirely sure. Rainer's just going to siege that fault base. And if he can burrow those lurkers before Cyril is there, I mean, he, how are you he just has that many corruptors. Like. How, how do you unseat this? He's got so many. He has 40 supply of corruptors. So you look at the army supply. Yeah, he has oh, more, but it, it's, it's a lie, Todd. Yes. The supply is lying. <laughs> Cyril. He needs to find a way to defend that attack across the map. He's set up on the high ground here. Lurkers are going to try to edge forward slowly. Raynor, a lot of his important army here is dying. And on the other side, he's trying to resaturate his bases. He's actually mining quite a bit more than Cyril right now. Does he need to play this aggressive? It feels like he can maybe finish the game. He smells blood in the water. Oh, I love this call. You see the Corruptors have been all over your expansions. You may as well get the Mutalisks back into action, especially since every unit at this point is so valuable for that defense. Imagine, look at just getting through all of these Ravagers, using the Overlord to try and dodge. He gets Burrow. Actually, beautiful usage of Burrow to be able to hide against those Mutas. You really cannot afford to lose the ground army here. This game just oscillating yeah. back and forth between the ground and the air focus on both sides and an infrastructure reset for Cyril because of Rainer's massive Ling run buys. Muda's trying to escape, gonna get chased down. That spawning pool in the main base of Cyril is actually gonna bleed out here because there is nothing to drop creep. Maybe creep threading would be nice to try and save that, but can we take a look at the income? Because Rainer right now, it feels like it should be... Oh my god, he's, he's mining double. so much he's more. double the drone count right now, 23 to 57. And this is ZVZ, so that larva is worth its weight in gold. Cyril with still 40 supply of Corruptors. His ground <laughs> army is not all that. I can't make use of it if you kill the Mutalisks like this and then goes and siege some buildings with Caustic yeah, Spray. He just has to keep using Caustic Spray. As well. I, I totally agree. Corruptors are tanky. Sport but there's so many Hydrogen. It's, it's, it's just such a hard call. What is the right play to make? How do you get into the position think, that you need to be? Yeah, look, he's, he's luring the army away. And now he's going to go for the hatchery, I think. Maybe with Custing Spray or yeah, the what? main base. So, yeah, that's yeah. going to fall so fast. You ever oh my seen God. one of those videos where they put a can of soda on car? That's the paint. It's the paint <laughs> coming off the hatchery right now. As these Roach Ravagers are also going to simultaneously hit the top base. The damage output and from the, the Crumpers base. is huge. He's going for the main base now. How are you supposed to defend? You need to have the Hydralisk around the fourth base, but oh my God. even the Overlords can, can die do... so quick. It's the old meme, mass, over, mass Viking strategy. Kill all their Overlords. How are they going to build units? No, seriously, <laughs> he's, he's supply blocked now. It's going to be a problem. But he is building 10 Lurkers. He got those started before the supply yeah. block. And that leaves us with an important question, Todd. How are you going to kill 10 Lurkers? Cause if bite, I guess. That's got to be the yeah, way here for him. That's his only option. Our Raider's going to counterattack knowing that all of the units of Cyril are out on the map. So. If these lurkers actually burrow inside of one of his bases, he's going to be completely shut down with the mining and the production. Cell is actually really trying to break that position here. He has an overseer. He jumps on top of a lot of those lurkers and takes them out. He's forcing Rainer to come back to that base to try and save it. The Corruptors, they don't even know where to go right now. They're just kind of flying back on the other side of the map. I do believe that Rainer got adaptive talents, so those lurkers are going to burrow damn near instantly, making it extremely difficult to outposition Rainer with these roaches. We see he's already been caught off guard. He's been boxed in, and he says, okay, we're going to hide underground? Cool. So will I. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to think an overseer is going to be on the way here in a second, but Cyril, knowing about this, says, well, you want to hunt down those units? I'm gonna get on top of your bases that are mining and take them out. There is only Lynx here trying to defend against these roaches. Caustic Spray takes out the natural hatchery and he's going, now going for the production buildings. That's right, and Sarah also saying, where are your overlords? He's going to supply block him. He's sending that supply to the Shadow Realm right now, Todd. He won't be able to build anything for quite some time. Those overlords not cheap to replace anymore. He does get the units on the top side, but He's bringing him into negative supply. That's it's, it's not a fun place to be. Those overlords, we're in a scrappy situation. Rainer has all this gas because he has to spend every mineral on overlords. That's it. He, that's it. That's all he can do. He's what a broke. crazy game. He's broke, and as the money comes in, it's just overlords. He's just slamming down the overlord key. Resources are still very, very close. 
Supply is still pretty even. 75 army to 61. Corruptors kill one more base, and Raider is going for a massive siege here. On that one base of Cyril, who's not even, he's barely mining anymore. Like, there's no minerals still... here, left here. He's just gonna long distance mine from elsewhere. Overlord still going extinct here almost in this game. The problem though, how does he kill all of these lurkers? It's a base trade, I think. They're just. Yeah, oh, that's that's the, the, I think that's his only option. He can't fight the Lurkers. He's going to bring the Lurkers home to try and defend, and he's like, well, the Hydras will kill everything over here, so... Ooh. He, wanted, he wants to send his ground army home to kill the Hydras and have it only be Lurkers available so that he can try to maybe do... Yeah, Corrosive Bite can kill Lurkers, but... I like this. He's actually going to try to just kill every oh single my building. God. I mean, the Corruptor, once it's, once it's doing its spray, uh, censored word for, like, seven seconds, Ooh, it goes up to 34 DPS. Cyril doesn't have any buildings left. He's got drones out and minerals for an extractor. So that's oh. what he's trying to do. He's it literally doesn't trying... Enough, he doesn't have enough minerals for a hatchery, though. The Caustic Spray Face Race. I can't believe... <laughs> you know what? My favorite StarCraft caster line is I've never seen this before, and I get to say it again. Ten years down the road, I have never seen anything like this. He's using that ability, the channeled Corruptor attack, to literally try... He says, I cannot kill your, your units because Corruptors don't shoot down. So I am just going to spray down all of your structures and hope that but I can do it before you can kill Cyril me. Cyril doesn't have a hatchery, so every single one of those, it, these extractors that he has out on the map are revealed right now. So Rainer, all he has to do is go from one to another, and I think he's going to be able to kill Cyril before Cyril can kill him. Cyril really going on the offensive right now. Rainer, some of your units are not attacking. You need to be a little bit quicker with this. Yeah, what an insane turn of events. These corruptors are here. I don't... No, does Rainer have drones? Oh, he has one in the yeah. bottom left. Can we have a look oh. at the structure tab? Oh my god, Cyril has two extractor left. Now, keep in mind... Three. The, the okay, he has some in the, in the production, so four right now. Yeah, but that's about it. The thing is, the buildings, once you start to build an extractor in this situation, the extractor is immediately revealed while under construction. So, you have to keep, while you're, while you're doing this, you have to be very careful to dance around it and keep a drone that isn't building one far away from everything else. That's but it, that these are his last few extractors down there. I don't think that Cyril can kill Rainer before Rainer will kill him. So he's trying to fight the army right now. I think he realized he was going to get eliminated if he didn't play like this. He's trying to cover his army. He's tra trying to trap these lurkers, but Rainer sees it. Oh, no. Okay, well, Rainer does not have detection. But, yes, your army is burrowed and safe. Two extractors but left. How are you going to kill his buildings if you're burrowed hiding? Okay, well, he's, he's going back over towards the structures. I think there's, yeah, there's too many buildings. There's not enough time for Cyril to kill all of the infrastructure, especially since the Corruptors don't really want to do that to the spores. Yeah, Rainer splits his units perfectly to try and get that, oh, get on top oh, of this oh, army with the Lurkers. <laughs> Cyril running out of forces here. Still trying That's to make it. stuff happen with the Corruptors. The last two. GG, Rainer does it. Wins by elimination in an epic ZVZ base trade. What a start to the Grand Finals, Todd. Absolutely nail-biting. Like I said, when I watch these two play ZBZ, it doesn't feel like I'm watching Zerg. This is a whole other... We're watching in art. Yes. This, what we are witnessing right now, the ceiling is being painted. Michelangelo is doing out. There's no mistakes, only happy accidents. Amen, Todd. Amen. That's what the ZBZ series starts off with. Delivers immediately. And wow, what a way for it to go down. Cyril, going for the curious choice, right? We see the Corruptors coming out against Mutalisk, something that not the most common play. And it gets him so much. But at some point, Rainer's like, yeah, well, I got enough Lurkers out, and your ground army just cannot compete. So he turned into this super awkward base trade. Is and, this uh, the best kind of game to win when it's this close for a long time and then you get like a huge sigh of relief after winning? I think it has to be. It, this must feel so good and all like for Cyril, this must feel really bad because he fought so hard for this one but just came up short. No, oh, I mean, that's... Uh, when you watch that type of play, I mean, Rainer, true to all of the hype and the memes that are surround him now, he's styled on him. You know what really wanted for Rainer? Is the Hydralis transition. Because... Why did Cyril make that many Corruptors? Because he was convinced that Raynor was going to stay the course. And that's because they've played many times in the past because of the way the game was going. After Cyril killed the first Spire, Raynor remade it and went back into air units. So after he killed it the second time, Cyril probably thought, well, what is he going to do? He's going to remake that Spire again and then go into more air. So he overcommitted to the Corruptors, got up to 20, but...
they don't shoot down hydrolysts, do they? Tragically, they do not. Corruptors are, are they're at least mannered enough that they only do what they do to buildings. So thank God for that. We are loaded <laughs> in to game number two, ladies and gentlemen, leading the series with that first map win in the Northeast of World of Sleepers. Please make a warm round of applause for Raynor. Spaghetti boy, as man in the crowd says. In the bottom left, the red Zerg player, the Finnish phenom. Can he bring it back? Probably, he is Cyril! The first 14 minutes of that first game was insane. Action all over the place. Non-stop, absolute mayhem. The crowd is pumped up and excited. I hope you are all enjoying this. Wherever you're tuning in from, wonderful folks here in Montreal, beautiful city. It's been a, been a hell of a weekend. And of course, all the wonderful folks online saying incredibly nice and polite things in Twitch chat. We love you too. <laughs> Not Only spamming nice anything at all either. Only nice things. I, I think some people are still posting the Doritos fan just because it's fun to do that, Todd. You know, <laughs> just wholesome content. And what more could you ask for on a beautiful Sunday, getting into such an awesome final where two players of such a high skill level go at it in a manner that makes even one of the most common matchups that we see a lot of because there's so many good Zergs in Europe look completely different than the average game. And now after a first game like this, you have to wonder, you know, does Rainer go into a Spire again? And if Serral goes into Spire himself, does he have to go into Corruptors one more time? I, again, I really think he did that because it was gonna, it was always gonna be really hard for him to catch up on that mute account and keep up with the upgrades, which obviously like you always start as soon as the Spire finishes. And that was something that Rainer had going in his favor. So you it's, always have to take in consideration what happened in the previous game, you know, the, the meta and everything that's happening affects every single choices that they take in those games. Yeah, there, there is another interesting element to that too. The Corruptor costs more resources than the Mutalisk as well. So while you're trying to hope that you need less of them to be stocky, he did have to rebuild a good few of them. The first wave of them when he went for yeah. the therapist upgrade, they died. He took the fight right before that upgrade actually ever finished. So he was never in a position to be as efficient as he should have been until the end of the game. At which point, you know, as we saw, he it was too late because there were so many more better ground units that the Corruptors could not uh, just win the game for Serral. But and you know, it feels like the way to beat Serral is to surprise him with something. And in a way, that's kind of what happened, right? Rainer transitioned out of Mutalist in the air, and Cyril just didn't see it for the longest time. And he only saw it when it was too late, when he had already made a ton of Corruptors, and it was always going to be really hard for him to fight properly against this. The Lurker transition in particular was really clever, I think. Yeah, he, he, that was actually a pretty small window too, Todd. Remember, the, the first thing that Corruptors Caustic sprayed with that base was the Lurker Den that died very quickly, and he had to rebuild it, and that was when he got the 10 more Lurkers. So. Cyril was even aware of that, but couldn't take advantage of it in the way that he wanted to. But Rainer in this game, he is pocketing a lot of Zerglings. He does not want Cyril to see them. What he wants Cyril to see is, hey, look at me, my drone's mining the minerals. I'm gonna take a base. Oh, and I think Cyril might have gotten a whiff of this. He saw a drone mining from those minerals there. He's trying to poke, he's trying to see how many Zerglings there are. And look, he went for his own bailing nest. He's getting a bunch of links. Mixing in some of those here with the drones that he's making on his side of the map. He's making a ton of links right now. He's seeing this coming. Cell needs to get ready for the defense here. Rainer committing a lot to this. 17 walkers to 36. This has to do a lot of damage there. Yeah, this is a really important moment. The Baneling Nest is going to be in for Serral. Rainer is just going for a straight up pure Link Flood. He actually does find a little bit of a hole to get some of these Zerglings through, and he has so many. Once they can get the surround, this is going to get really dangerous for Serral. The Banelings are not ready yet on the bottom of the natural expansion ramp, but some of the Zerglings able to get inside of the main base. The drones are under fire. Remember, Serral has currently doubled the worker count of his opponent. If he can just hold this attack off, he's going to be in a phenomenal position. But Rainer, can he target down those Banelings? Gets rid of one of them. He just needs to pick these off. The Ling count still should be heavily in his favor, but one or two good bailing connections could save everything for Cyril. Yeah, Rainer doing such a good job negating the damage from these bailings. He danced all around them, sacrificed the minimum amount of Zerglings here to make sure. <laughs> Finally a big detonation, but there's still more links where that came from. 17 walkers to 29, and Rainer is committing everything he has to this. Only Zerglings in the production tab. He hasn't gone back into drones just yet. He needs to do more damage. 
There's something else worth noting here, Todd. If Serral can hold on, that plus one melee is about to finish. His Zerglings, he may not have as many, but they are going to be so much more powerful. Raider taps out. Serral takes game number two after a phenomenal hold against that Ling Flood. Really like how Raynor tried to sell something. You talked about it. You got to surprise him. You got to hit him with something he wasn't seeing. And on that map, he had a way to say something without doing anything. And he mined the minerals between the natural and the third, made it look like he wanted that base. And Cyril says, I wasn't born last night. <laughs> he saw it early enough that he could react, get back home with the links that he had. And even getting the Bailing Nest as early as he did, obviously that really helped. Without Bailing Seal, that would have been a lot harder. And uh, yeah, Raynor that just got spotted. He wishes it didn't, but Serral, able to see that coming, got ready for the defense. You know, actually, like, that was a little weird. Like, he let the, some of the links come in because he thought he had a full surround and they wouldn't be able to get through. And then those links, they did, you know, what they do. They kind of, like, walk through units. Yep. And then he managed to overwhelm that position that almost backfired for Seal to let that happen. Because at first, if he had just stood in that small corner where the Evos and buildings were that were blocking, Rainer wasn't able to go through. But Seal was like, oh, I can get a favorable trade. So he pulled back just a little bit. And then he entered the life of a Protoss that has a Zealot in his wall when Lynx, you know, do that little thing where they somehow walk through. And that, would, that got scary for a second, for sure, for Seral. But he's able to hold on, gets the Equalizer, and... We're now tied up one and one here in these best of seven grand finals, Nathaniel. You have to be so careful in those situations, Todd. Did you know units in StarCraft, when they're moving, are technically smaller? So when you make those little reposition adjustments, the amount of room that that Zergling has to run around your walling units actually increases just a little bit. And sometimes that's enough for that flood to happen because I, I was on the same boat as you looking at that. Like, if he's able to just block this, he, he, yeah. sh he should have a natural concave. But Rainer was able to just slip through the little cracks that opened in between the Zerglings themselves with that large number. And well, that's why we've got a tied game. Actually, that's not why. He's still somehow held, which is a miracle. But that's why we have a tied <laughs> series as we load into map number three. Which of these Titans of the world will move on and take the lead in this best of seven? In this top left position, spawning as the blue Zerg player, he is Raynor. And his opponent in the southeast, the reigning world champion, he is Cyril! In the zone, didn't let first game discourage him, went for the proper scouting, reacted correctly. And uh, I mean, after you lose game one in such a fashion, it's always nice, you know, to defend a cheese and kind of get back into it, you know, pretty easily. We always see uh, Seal, you know, say stuff to himself after some of those games. He's kind of talking out loud. Yeah, I mean, and he maintaining that confidence. But you see the sign the guy had in the crowd. He says, Rainer's the best player, changed my mind. Cyril, Cyril's looking for the dub here just so he can tell that guy, okay, I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to show you who the best player in the world is. Not that he, of course, didn't do it at the end of last year, but establishing just a little bit of that cool, calm collectiveness. And that's one of the biggest strengths, right? When a player is put up on a pedestal, like Cyril is, even equivalent or almost equivalent skill opponents that go up against him, they already kind of put themselves in this weird place where they're thinking about, okay, well, he is really scary, and that's going to already start to affect your judgment, affect the choices that you're going to make, and perhaps some of the success that Rainer has against a player like Cyril comes out of that young cockiness where he says, oh, of course I know I'm as good as him. Yeah. No, I'm not scared of him. And that alone might be one of the reasons why Rainer finds so much success yeah, that's, that's against That shows in his games. He's fearless for sure. If there is a gamble to take that he thinks, you know, might have a small chance of success, like sometimes he'll just take it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the correct style to use against someone like Cyril, in my opinion. And this finally, is Cyril has bled. This is fascinating, though, because Rainer's doing it again. Cyril starts a spine crawler. He sees what looks like a late hatch, but Johan, it's not a late hatch. It's an early third because, and he starts, he cancels the spine. He realizes, like, oh my goodness, I think he actually took a fast third expansion and a little bit debated right there. So Rainer already able to make it look like he's going for an early pool and get Cyril on the defensive. What's also blowing my mind is the lack of gas being mined by Rainer, which says to me he wants to get that creep out and try to wall off this giant ramp 
Um, John Thunderbird, many people do like to do in all matchups now. It's become a, it became a little bit more of a thing towards the end of last season. And since Thunderbird is still around in this season of WCS, it has been uh, it's been a popular choice. Not that we've had a crazy amount of ZBZs at this tournament, which is really weird to say since it's the yeah. circuit. But uh, I'm not too surprised to see it, even though we haven't had a whole bunch of examples recently of it happening. Yeah, Terrence actually a pretty good showing. I think this. I was going to say, it's one of the more uh, diverse in terms of the, the cast and crew that made it into the top 16 for this tournament than we usually do have at WCS, which is another reason why this has been one of the better events. Of course, when you opt to do something like this, if Zerglings do get inside, well, they move pretty quick, and you're not going to have an easy time being able to get them out of your base. So Sarah will be able to get a full read on everything. If he was secretly mining gas and trying to make it like a double bluff, it would have been sniffed out. So Cyril gets to say to himself, okay, you're being extremely greedy. You don't have any gas. I can be a bit greedy now. The follow-up, however, is going to be Roaches because that's going to build into the wall very nicely. And Rainer is taking the extractors <laughs> in the actual natural. Rainer not having link speed makes this so annoying. Like, these links just keep going around. They're sniping one drone at a time, and they're really taking a lot of the attention of Rainer away, whereas all Cyril had to do was, you know, Kind of just shift around the movement and then eventually go for some of the drones here of Rainer. Now we see plus one missile attack starting from Cyril. Roach Warren, Lair is on the way. He's ready to go into that uh, pig's favorite, the Roach phase. Mm. I mean, the only reason why he actually wasn't here to cast the finals instead of me is because they were scared of how loudly he might say Roaches <laughs> when they got all over each other. They're quite, quite exciting. Of course, that's not one of the things that you really see when it's Rainer versus Sarah, but perhaps this could turn into a Roach Fiesta. Oh, yeah. The sky's the limit, Todd. We shouldn't tell these players they can't also do standard schmandard ZVZ. They're going to live their best life, even if that means making a ton of roaches. I don't know if making a ton of roaches is really anyone's best life, but <laughs> I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Uh, layers are coming in for both players. Roach speed is going to start. I don't think too much faster than Rainer's. His Lair's maybe like 20, 30 seconds behind, but that Roach speed will be nice to have a little bit ahead. His plus one attack lines up actually quite a bit uh, further ahead too. So if he does get into a scrap, it shouldn't be too bad for him, Johan. So with a bit of a supply block here, five overlords in the production tab. So sometimes, I mean, this is... Okay, I was going to say this is intentional if he wants to make a ton of units, but no, he goes back into drones. So a little bit uncharacteristic. I mean, it was not the end of the world. Like, it didn't last forever, but... Funny thing about that is, like, as long as he's still getting his injects and the hatcheries aren't at like the larva capacity limit, he really just misses like maybe one and a half of the larva that a hatch would generate normally, right? So as long as he gets the inject, once the overlord's finished, he can still yeah. kind of recover. Yeah, but if you want to make drones, you want to make them. Yeah, that's, as soon you do as want them earlier. You do want them earlier. That is a good point. It would have been better if it was for army units, but uh, slip ups happen. We had, you know what? It, it has been an intense match. I think at the start of the last game. It looked like Cyril had started and canceled something very, very early on. Like he misplaced yeah. his spawning pool in front of his gas Ooh, or something. He flew by. I mean, like he should be able to tell that this is a spire. I don't think anyone rushes a spore crawler there, so that's it. <laughs> or a spine. I, I like that. That would be I, a sick mind game. <laughs> like the, the 300 IQ spore, in case you're not, it's like in Protoss who like hides two pylons in the corner of their base, so you think it's a dark shrine. It's like, <laughs> what on earth? Hoping that the opponent won't click. You only look at the fog of war. You're like, well, why would there be a pylon building next to another pylon? So with Rainer already going to roaches, this time it might be just some mutas. Whereas, you know, in the game number one, you obviously committed very heavily towards those mutants. He's never really stopped producing them. Now, you know, you'd get like 7 to 10 a lot of the time. Kill or push away all of the overlords that are in the middle of the map, and then you can transition into Hydralisk, into Lurkers if you want to. You can go into Hive, you know, get plus 3 missile, attack, upgrades. The tail end of that, by the way, I believe as the Overseer exited towards the northeast, he totally saw the Spire. He's got a bunch of Spore Crawlers on the way. Hydras are coming out. He's getting grooved spines, so those Hydralists are going to get that range upgrade. Very important for a situation such as this. And the Muta Count is not at some insurmountable number yet that he can't really uh, push away. So that is going to change, but so will the Hydralist Count. And things will get a little bit easier for Cyril. He's going to run the Overseer through once more. Seeing that Lurker Den start, very important to know. Says, hey, okay, this is maybe not going to be uh, big Mutas like it was the previous game. Or game one, excuse yeah. me. It makes me really happy to see Cyril put so much effort into scouting. I really feel like there is, you know, some of the greatest Zergs out there for a the long time. They were extremely good, but maybe not always the most consistent with that scouting. And it really feels like, 
it really feels like he's identified that like one of the only way he could lose a game like this is if somewhere in the game he misses one of the transition happening and then gets surprised by it. So he's trying to cover all of his bases, goes for the scout, always tries to see everything that the opponent is doing. And if that happens, if it's a game of mechanics and who's playing better with the micro positioning, engagement and all that, he thinks he's going to have an upper hand and he very well might be right. We got a big number of roaches and hiders oh trying to God. move across the map. Cyril would love to make a push happen before lurkers are a factor in this game. Look at the army supply, 131 to 100 right now. He's going to get on top of this army of Raider. Raider is wall is blocking him outside of it. He if he tries micro. to go inside, he'd be cornered. He actually can't micro, and his plus two attack is not yet ready. So a full upgrade down there, and Cyril's Roach Hydra just absolutely obliterating the defenses of our Italian Zerg. There is nothing here to stop this force. He's trying to rebuild his army, but Johan, it's too little, too late. GG, Cyril holds on and punishes the greed of Young Raider. How dare you ruin my perfect record. I love it. You took I a map from me, and you're going to get punished for it. You stole my my lossless WCS victory from me. It's like, uh, you know, sometimes you, you do more damage as you get hurt. One of those one of those perks, that's what Cyril's got rolling for him. Ladies and gentlemen, your grand finals will resume after a short break. We'll get right back into the action for the epic conclusion of WCS Fall.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the StarCraft II World Championship Series Fall Grand Finals. We are in a heated contest of champions as the young Italian stallion faces off against the man so powerful we have to keep finding new villains because the ones we try to name him after keep disappointing us in the finales of their <laughs> respective series it's Cyril versus Rainer and it has been what can we say other than a banger of a grand a final bloodbath. Time? a bloodbath especially sure, the first game I'm sure we'll be getting there as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah very good chance we might and honestly Rainer won a map but I feel like what it took for him to win that one in the first game is almost discouraging. 14 minutes of non-stop action, an epic base trade. And in the next two games, it was really Cyril coming back and saying, all right, like, you've had your chance, you won a map, now that's it. I'm running this show and I'm gonna win these grand finals. And he completely shut Rainer out, shut him down. And now he finds himself in a 2-1 lead. It is best of seven. First blood was drawn, but can any more be extracted from this monster? All of these for a drop of blood. <laughs> By our Blizzard player in the southeast of Disco Bloodbath with that infested terror to moat. He is Radar! <laughs> he faces off against this man, denied him that undefeated championship replies with the poo emoji he is Cheryl! <laughs> oh Nate, I love you <laughs> he put it in the chat i'm allowed yeah, to say yeah. it i'm yeah. good i'm clear Cheryl sure. really turned it on in the last two games perfect scouting exactly what he needed again the one game that he lost i really feel maybe was the, because he wasn't able to see the transition out of Rainer. He kind of got surprised by was, what was happening. He identified that, he corrected it, and now we're seeing the newer version of Cyril, the updated. Improvise, adapt, overcome. The firmware has been not, updated. Not only is that pretty much the MO of Zerg to just continuously evolve, but Cyril's gameplay just constantly improves. At no point do we ever say to ourselves, Man, you know, he just keeps winning doing the same thing. Or, huh, I, I'm just surprised that people haven't figured out his style. No, he's really plateaued here. He, yeah. Say nobody ever. Exactly. And it's the thing that the, the game has changed since he won BlizzCon last year. I mean, for crying out loud, Battle Cruisers are a viable unit that have been busted out against him <laughs> in almost every ZVT. He's yeah. still dominating. He's still crushing. So many m metagame map shifts come and go, but Cyril does not. He, he remains stalwart in the face of change, adapting and constantly able he, to he's a acclimate. Constant. He's a constant in, in our universe. He's, all, he's always delivering in these tournaments. I love it. He's just, even he's even though he lost in the previous finals at summer, he's coming back with the revenge. Not only did he defeat Rainer 4-0 in Challenger, he's now up 2-1. Can the young Italian player fight back? It's gonna have to be through, I think, doing something maybe a little different. Maybe not trying to trick Cyril as much anymore. At least in the first place, because those early game rushes, if they're spotted by Cyril, you're not gonna have too much of a chance. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really difficult position to be in, because Cyril is a player that is constantly learning. I mean, we talk about uh, Alpha Star trying to figure the game out and talk about how, you, how a player learns StarCraft. Cyril's got to be the prime example. He makes all these adjustments. He, he has all these little ideas. And he's seen early hatcheries a few times now in this series if it wasn't a cheese coming in. So these links swing around That's pretty gonna be a early. And this, this is not the type of deny that should be possible. Yet here we are. There's a cancel. Cyril has a third base building, by the way. But Todd, he's not building drones. 16 links. He might be choosing to try and uh, go on the aggressive here because he was able to get a cancel on the hatchery. And he thinks that Rainer to try and make up for that, would cut some corner and go into some additional drones. Now Rainer is going to see that with the overlords on the north side of the map. He has to react very quickly. He's morphing some banelings. This might be designed just to snipe that third base again. But the banelings are going to be finishing very, very soon here. Oh, Cyril is going to use the links on the left side as a decoy to try and sneak inside of the main base with some zerglings. Some of those are probably going to be morphed into banelings. Rainer has to be looking everywhere at the same time. Rainer only has so many links to try and defend against this with. The links do get inside three drones. 
picked off inside of the main base. Now, Cyril did get a Baneling Nest, but he's prioritizing the plus one missile attack because he's already thinking 10 steps ahead. Does he even have a Roach Horn? He's like, no, this upgrade He's like, look, I'll need it in the future. It's going to be fun. <laughs> it's an important tool it's that we'll use later. Investment. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So with this third base being done, he doesn't really need to commit to aggression. And what he could be doing is just putting that pressure on Raynor where he tries to make a big attack, but then the Roaches are already out with that plus one. However, I guess I am interested to see what he's going to get that. Bailey comes out, gets, uh, gets some of those links blown up, and Cyril has more links to use to defend. The benefit of the hatchery being done earlier, of course, is access to larva and a little bit of that creep. Oh, those failings. Let's see if anybody can get decent connections here. He's going to kill, actually, a few of Cyril's drones. It's, uh, yeah. That's quite nice for Raynor, considering the blow he took earlier. He is still down a handful. And Raynor's making a ton of links right now. He's morphing Bailings. He's got plus one melee on the way. Whereas for Cyril, we've got the Roach Run on the way. But I think he fully realized that there were units headed on his side of the map. So he's getting a ton of links. He's adding more queens, trying to hold on right now. Nice target fire on the squints on the Bailings. Now, this is going to be really awkward because, as you mentioned, the Roach Horn is finishing now and plus one missile attacks is going to be pretty close but rainer is also getting plus one for his for his zerglings that plus one melee and uh those links are going to be much more effective against the roaches but i do think that in this early stage the plus one range for the roaches to two shot the links is going to more than help make up and overcome the fact that the links themselves will be able to chip away at those roaches a little bit faster now if he is able to win a big fight plus one links, he's not going to be able to rely on Zerglings of his own. Everything comes down to the Roaches in a situation like this as Raynor continues to apply pressure on that third. Bane links trading out. Big detonation, I think that was for Cyril. Yeah. Quite a few Zerglings died by that third, and all of a sudden, you slam the drone key, Todd. That was so well done, by the way, by Cyril. Like, he knew that the attack on the right-hand side of the third base was not the whole picture, so he stood around the wall of, at his natural where Raynor was trying to sneak in. And he was like, nope, not today. Very intelligent. I, in fact, I, I invented this. So that's not I gonna literally work just did this to you at the start of the <laughs> game, bro. You're trying to use my own strats against me? He says, no. And that's, that's some of that skill. So look at this. I was going to say, a layer in a fourth base, just a pretty, uh, pretty late layer, pretty early fourth for Raynor. But the Nidus Network, yeah. Todd, he is thinking about bringing an end to this game. And that, those plus one roaches coming out of the worm are going to be mighty difficult for Raynor to stop. What a sick location as well, in between the natural and third base, where it somewhat would be less likely to be scouted unless a link went at the front. But also, the hatchery is being this close to it, means the roaches are going to stream right into that one, and they can immediately tunnel across the map to be even more effective. 52 army supply, for sale, 28 for comes. Raider. First Nidus is on the way around the third base of Raider. Can Raider be ready on time? He's making drones right now. He has no idea he's gonna hear that scream and know that there's a Nidus somewhere out on the map and he's gonna be in a world of trouble. He starts to spire. There you go, the ultimate dinosaur death scream of the night is bursting outside of that third base of Raynor. Meanwhile, another one building inside of his main base. Perhaps some of those units can head back, and he's going to be able to hit multiple bases at once. Raynor wants to counterattack, but it's not necessarily the defense that Cyril's worried about. It's all about that offense. He's going to get into the main. He did start a spire, Raynor, in that main, so that could also be picked off in this phase. He may not be able to rely on trying to get to some cheeky mutalisks to save himself. It's a disaster. Raynor had to abandon the main base. Yeah, the Spire is even there on the right side. The main is completely killed. These roaches blocking the door to the natural. And the Banelings are there, blowing up a huge chunk of those links. Cyril taking absolute dominance in game number four. I don't see how he can be stopped here, Todd. There's just too many roaches. He has upgrades on those links. But once that spawning pool dies, he's not going to be able to produce any more. He still has the worm outside of the third, so he's just going to rotate in that direction. All he can do is build roaches that are worse than Cyril's. This third base is going to get blasted down, doubling in army supply is the Finnish Phenom cracking onto this base. Worms erupting all over. Disco bloodbath. GG Cyril goes to match point against our Italian youngster. These games are so action-packed, Todd. I need to get insurance on my lungs after this. <laughs> they really are. Cyril really turning it on and saying, well, you're not the only one that can play very offensive. I can go on the offensive myself. Rushes, even the first few Zerglings getting the cancel, that's not supposed to happen. The fact that he got that, you know, maybe that's gave crazy. him the confidence to go for more links, keep up with the aggression, and then the Nidus, a brilliant move. It feels like he's just 
anticipating a little better what Rainer is going to do. And Rainer was going for that Spire again, which I mean he did before, so... He re like, Cyril really picked up on that and probably already thought going into this game that if he was to find himself in a situation where he thought this had a decent chance of winning, he was going to go for it. Goes for it, works perfectly. In a weird way, this reminds me a lot of the series against Neeb, where we know Neeb to be an aggressive player who wants to try and get out and do stuff. Raynor wants to do these plus one link builds. He wants to get map control and take bases. But Cyril says, I'm going to force you to be the player that's defending. Now, of course, it is still ZVZ, so Raynor does get across the map, but by then it's already too late. Cyril has the third base situated. He's getting upgrades of his own. Then those roaches come out, and everything just spirals out of control. Getting that plus one ranged attack so fast seems a bit risky, seems a little bit greedy, but he delays yeah. the Roach Warren. Instead, instead of timing the Roach oh, Warren and then getting the upgrades, he gets the upgrade before he can even build Roaches. Definitely invested in the right crypto. Yes, yes he did. And not many people do. No, no, not many people do, Todd. It's a, it can be a, it's a dangerous world out there. We're loaded into what could be the final map here at WCS Fall. Can our Italian Zerg in the bottom right Bring it back and draw more blood, or will he too fall to the god of Finland? In the southeast, he is Raynor! And his opponent looking for yet another WCS championship. He's got so many trophies, even his trophies have trophies. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> give it up for Cero! Definitely got all the momentum in the world right now in these Grand Finals. He really turned it back on after that first map win and was very aggressive in the previous map, which is going to keep Raynor guessing now. How aggressive is Cyril playing? Raynor hasn't been the one nearly as focused on the scouting as Cyril has been. And now he's going to have to be a lot more careful because if he gets surprised by any of his attacks, apparently Cyril is not, is not willing to just sit back and macro and, you know, trying to make it to the the big supply army is the later stages of the game. No, he can also attack and he's very dangerous when he does. Yeah, this series has just been... It, it reminds me of every match we talked about, either Raynor or Sarah leading up to this tournament, except now, Raynor is the one where we're trying to look for his opportunities. We're trying to find the high points against Cyril. And while he did take that only map, suddenly... It's like Cyril just turned on the Jets and started sprinting ahead, and Raynor has been struggling to catch up ever since that so, so intense, that so close tight base trade at the end of Acropolis. And I'm not entirely sure where Raynor goes from here because it's not like Raynor is just trying these attacks that are failing. Cyril is attacking. Cyril is constantly forcing Raynor to be defensive, and he's saying, go ahead. Try to counterattack. Put yourself even further behind. Oh, he's been one step ahead of Raynor uh, in every single one of those last three maps. And Raynor's gonna have to change that here. He's gonna have to be a little bit more on point with whatever it is that he's doing. Maybe a bit more of a standard game at first, because I don't think game number one was the craziest at first, but you know, like from the moment those mutas entered the field was really when Raynor had a lot of momentum with his earlier Spire. And then that was Cyril going to Corruptors and kind of trying to react to him. He was the one setting the pace, really, for the game. Right. Without necessarily overcommitting to any attacks in the first place. So now we have similar builds. We see a Metabolic Boost on the win, Production Tab for both players, Bailing Nest here on Ephemeron. Yeah, this map... Not that we've been able, and it, it is kind of fun actually, because for me, I feel like I'm getting a bit of exploration on ZVZ from this from this series as well, just because we've had so few mirrors actually on the stage. I don't think we did a single uh, TVT. Maybe there was one PVP, if I recall, but there was very few Zerg versus Zergs that we've had in this tournament. Yeah. And it, because it's a new map pool, the players are also kind of figuring that out, looking for where these, these opportunities are. Is this map too open to try and take that fast third? Naturally, I think the, the argument for getting the link speed, of course, is very much so there, or you're going to have a really hard time crossing that distance, because it's not that close between the natural and the third on this map either. Yeah, I think usually it would be very scary, but I mean, these two players are just so insanely good that for them it doesn't feel nearly as scary. It's almost as if they're playing a completely different game than most people. Lair on the way now for Cyril, plus one missile, starting earlier for Raynor. Would he be the one going for 
Aspire, maybe. No, it does start plus one missile. Yeah. And not mining that much, that much gas just it, yet. Going to go down uh, with the Roach Warren. It feels like it's almost too fast of a lair to be, like, that you would get an upgrade timing with it. Like, you only have so much economy, but Cyril has the third base. He's getting a quarter saturation, almost half saturation on it. So this might be... I mean, you could try to time it with Roach speed, but Rainer's also moving straight into there, so it's kind of like both players have figured out that they're just going to go straight to the Roach phase of ZBZ, but it has never really been that simple, Todd. They always go for some other tech after the lair. It's, it, it hasn't just been Roach on Roach on Roach. One player has been going for that Spire or that Nidus, <clears throat> excuse me, or even that Hydralisen, as we've already seen. So I'm, I'm curious if that's what's all it's going to boil down to. Maybe this is the classic uh, ZBZ Roach Roach Fiesta, we could get there. These things trying to poke a little bit, looking for some ground. That Baneling, very well controlled, very well protected in the pocket. But Cyril's just getting Roach speed and plus one. So this might be, yeah. he may be looking to just do a really big Roach attack. Yeah, I think like when Cyril plays this kind of style uh, and he just gets close to maxing out, you know, when he gets over like 140 supply, his biggest strength is his engagements. Presetting the concave before the fight, choosing which fights exactly he's going to take and in what location and kind of planning ahead yet again. He throws down there we go. the Nidus once more here. Cyril going to go very heavily into fighting units here with the Roachers and with the plus one on the way that's going to line up very well with when that Nidus finishes. But Rainer's making a ton of Roachers himself on the other side of the map. And he yeah. has more workers. Well, so if he's able to catch up with those Roach count and army supply, he's going to be fine. There's a weird thing that happens here, though. The Roach speed is going to be done so much faster. It gets a cancel on that yeah. expansion, too. I noticed this, by the way. Like, Rainer went for Numatize Carapace. He made an Overseer across the map. So this time, he really adjusted. He wanted to make sure he knew what he was up against. So he fully scouted this. He knows what's coming. He's getting some spine crawlers right now. Trying to make as many units as he can. And I think Rainer, if he can hold down here against that first Nidus, he's going to be fine. He gets the cancel on it. Now, here's the problem, though. Todd, he doesn't have Roach speed. Rainer cannot actually run away with his Roaches. All he can do is stand and deliver against the Roaches of Serral. And while, yes, he did cancel that Nidus, he lost all of the Roaches that he had out on the map. And as that next Nidus does pop, he's going to be able to pick up both spines before they finish. The one Ravager is not enough. Serral is going for the throat here in game. Number five. More roaches coming out of the night. He's got another one popping inside of the main base in the middle of all of this. And he's continuing to put that pressure on. Bringing it forward. Cameraman's getting a little bit excited about the possible GG. Another spine trying to reposition <laughs> on that third base. But there's just more roaches, Todd. Look at these to fly. I'm looking and Raider needs to regroup. He's got so few less forces in comparison. Knight is going up in the main base. Still rallying across the map so fast with that one Knight of his. He's bringing out the drones to fight against the roaches. That's never a good sign. Rainer down on army supply, down on workers, and possibly now down again in the WCS final. GG! Cyril has done it! One more time, one more trophy for the Finnish Phenom, your world champion, putting another one up on the mantle in glorious fashion. A beautiful end to this match. Decisive plays. Unshakable determination. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 WCS Fall Champion, Saro! Congratulations, Saro. What an interesting matchup that was. Game one, what an incredible ZBZ. That was one of the most intense matchups we've seen this entire tournament. Obviously, Rainer took the game. You found your momentum, though, after that victory in game two, and you just never looked back. What are your thoughts on this match? Uh, I think it was a very interesting match. <laughs> I, a lot of the games went very scrappy, and that's not exactly what I like, but I think I got the upper hand at the early game, or early stages of the scrappy always, so I don't know. Obviously very happy with the win, but at the same time, not my kind of games for sure. Got it. Now, what? as we look towards the future, towards the Global Finals, we know we're going to see you there. How are you going to spend the rest of your time preparing and getting equipped for that? Are you ready to take on the Global title once more? 
Well, Obelism re trying to be ready at least. I don't think I need to do anything very specific, just basic practice and what I have been doing. It's been working pretty well, so I'll just keep going the same road. Sounds like a great plan, my friend. All right, Montreal, let's give it up one more time for the WCS Full Circuit Champion, Saro! Oh, and tradition, tradition, one second, yes. Kerry's got it for you. Good luck, my friend. Good luck. <laughs> the final boss. Yeah! The king ascends to his throne once again. Serral claims his rightful place at the top. Six-time WCS circuit champion and global champion. He now has enough WCS stones to click his fingers and make Reyna disappear into the nether. Unbelievable stuff. And he <laughs> made it look good, pig. I mean, that was just so smooth. And this is what happens when you get on the big dog's radar. Serral has clearly been planning it out. He's been looking for weaknesses, and he didn't give Raynor an ounce of space no. after that first map. He said, I didn't really like it when it got scrappy. And we can see, <laughs> I mean, it was very decisive after that first game. He just got in there. Uh, the Nidus Worm utilized over and over again. But I mean, I've just got to say, he was just so in Raynor's face throughout. Yeah, I think that actually was a... It was surprising because it wasn't as surprising, right? Like, Rainer was trying to do his tricks, and then this time, Sarah was actually just like, no, stop it. <laughs> like, he had responses. Him away. He had responses to the Muta stuff that used to give him trouble, right? Yep, with the Corruptors, yep, yep. apparently very effective, although that was the game that he lost. And then he had the, you know, exact response against the Ling Flood that, again, is something that Rainer likes to use in the finals against Serral, because that's what they're always in, right? And uh, this time, Serral was like, I know what you're going to do. And I have responses to everything. Absolutely. Just one map dropped throughout the entirety of the tournament. Serral, once again, WCS Circuit Champion here for fall. Let's take a look at overall our eight players, which are also going to be moving on here into the global final throughout this circuit for 2019. Not only, of course, Serral, front and center, middle of the pack, but guys, Guys, this is the strongest top eight we have ever had from the non-Korean region for a global finals. Just think about the potential you've got there. All of these players have had impressive wins against the best in the world in the last couple of months. Uh, we've got such a great lineup there. I love seeing faces like Time in there. Uh, Showtime hitting it up once again. Hero Marine making it to his second one. It's just very cool because in the past, you've had some players get in there and you go, mm. oh, maybe they have a chance to take, it, take a series. Many of those players our absolute favorites to take out their groups. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I mean, GSL versus the world was a great almost prelude to everything that could potentially go on at the global finals, Jess, yeah. with the amount of fight that we saw in a lot of our non-Koreans going up against the best Koreans in the world. Yeah, it was really great. Last year we had Serral, basically the only person who really, really performed at GSL yeah, versus yeah. the world. Obviously, he won it. Uh, and we were like, well, that makes sense. He's literally the best. This year we had a lot of non-Koreans perform at GSL versus the world, so much so that there was two non-Koreans in the finals. Yes. So they've proven that this top eight isn't just seven plus Serral. Although, I mean, they're also pretty good, but it is actually top eight that's ready to take on the Koreans. And a final question here before we actually do wrap things up. It is rare in StarCraft II, uh, it may have never truly happened, where the, f the winner of a global final is then the favorite to go into the next global final and get a back-to-back -back world championship. For Serral winning here and then potentially going on to the global final to do well there as well, it is unprecedented, aside from all the other unprecedented things that he has already done. You know what they say, James? Form is temporary, class is forever. And Serral mm. is showing he's in a class of his own. Definitely so. Jess, final thoughts? That was an amazing way to end it.
Don't, don't let me don't let me ruin that. That's a perfect perfect saying, well, Bandit. We shall leave it at that. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you very much to everyone around the world tuning in here once again. As previously mentioned, Cyril is once again WCS Circuit Champion. He claims his rightful throne once again, and he'll be moving on into that global final to try and defend his crown there. Thank you very much for tuning in to WCS Fall. It's been a phenomenal tournament once again, and we shall see you for the global finals.